All right, back with that ridiculously clean 68 Super Reverb. And I've had a lot of really nice conversations this week with the owner on the pros and cons of everything. Collectability, original uh, state versus playability and protecting the amp itself, especially the transformers and the condition from a catastrophic failure with these old electrolytic capacitors beginning to leak. Now this one uh, is working, but if you look at the previous video, the old electrolytics are just beginning to bulge. And uh, after asking, answering a lot of questions, the owner agrees, and he talked to every player he knows, and they all agree that this amp needs to be preserved, by which we mean made in perfect playing condition so that the important things in the app are not damaged in uh, some fruitless goal to chase originality. If you ask people what is so great about Leo Fender's amp designs, Everyone will say, because they were designed to be serviced. And then collectors will turn around and say, oh my God, this amp's been serviced. This amp, which was so wonderful because it was so easy to service, has been serviced. Now it's not worth anything. And that, to me, is insane. Leo Fender and the other guys involved in the process originally designed these to be serviced because they expected them to need servicing and the time has come so I have the green light and we're gonna get started I have some parts on order but I'm go going to go ahead and get started on this because I've been wanting to do this amp and I'm gonna start by removing the old two conductor power cable and getting the wiring for the AC circuitry ready uh, for the new power cable, though I will install the new power cable last because when I'm working on something on the bench, having a 10, 12 foot cable attached to everything can be a drag. So that's one of the reasons it's the first thing to be disconnected. So my iron is hot and tinned and I'm going to start with removing the old wires here from this courtesy outlet. Now, on later 70s courtesy outlets, the hot and neutral have different size lugs and uh, there's a grounded connection. So if this is a 70s amp with a uh, courtesy outlet, I will often leave it connected because it is safe. No difference, no different at that point than a, uh, something plugged into the wall of your house. But on the 60s, the outlet is only two conductor. There's no ground and there's no division or separation between hot and neutral. And uh, it's not great. Very few people use it. it. Just doesn't make a lot of sense to retain it. It does make a nice tie point for the neutral junction between the neutral of the new cable coming in and the uh, primary on the power transformer. So we will use it for that. So let me get these out. And I will remove this cable physically in a little bit. But first I'm gonna get everything ready here for the new primary wiring. Because on this amp, as in most 60s, let me move the heater wiring down so you can see better. You have a switch, you have a fuse. Well, they have the primary connections here. So they have one, the switch is on one primary and the fuse is on the other. If this is all wired as intended, they have the hot switched and the neutral fused. I want the hot to go to the fuse and then to the switch and not have the neutral 
tied into these things at all. This is not just my druthers. This is actual U.S. safety code, and I'm sure most countries follow the same. So I'm going to remove the wires here at the polarity switch, the ground switch. All these old wires that I take out are going to be returned with the amp. Some of these are going to be repurposed here, and some of these will be removed from the app and returned. And I'm trying to be very careful not to touch any of these beautiful wires with the soldering iron, because I don't want any dark spots. Let me add a little fresh solder to that. Sometimes it, adding the fresh solder with its fresh bit of flux helps the old stuff flow. All right, so that one's out. Now, on some amps, due to the physical layout, I will use the polarity switch to tie the neutral wires together, in which case I will remove the old capacitor, the death cap, from the polarity switch, the ground switch, to ground. Um, it looks like I have plenty of length on the primary here that's connected to this fuse, so that I can move it to one of these points on the old... Uh, courtesy outlet for a neutral tie point, so I don't have to use any connections on this polarity switch. So I will leave this capacitor physically in the amp, you know, for the vintage vibe or whatever people want to call it, but it will not be connected to anything, so it can no longer cause any damage. I'm going to disconnect this primary from the fuse. I'm going to unwind this wire. It's a little bit tricky with that polarity cap in place because this wire goes right behind it. Let's see if I can do this. The added joy of doing this on camera. All right, I'm going to disconnect from the uh, power switch and pull this over and do that. Then I can get everything neatly, and then I can run this back to where it should be when I'm done. So let me unwind this. And make sure I have the right amount of slack for everything. So that's good. As far as the power transformer primary connections go, there is no hot and neutral in this app. Uh, AC has no polarity. So it's not critical where things go. Oh, look, there's an old snippet of wire here that's been tucked in here since 1968. That's, that's fun. I have found some strange things in amps. This is not one of the st strange ones, but you always find something. That wire has just been tucked in that bundle for forever. And until I did that, it probably never would have moved. All right, so just going back to here. I'm going to get the old solder off the switch connection and make sure we have a good, nice, fresh solder joint at the power switch. Just trying to remove some of the excess. I have had better desoldering pumps. And this one's on its last legs. I've got some fresh ones in the, in the mail to me. They wear out. All right. Visibly looking at that switch connection. It's got a little more solder on it. I want to make sure it's not dirty at all. I don't want any excess flux or old dirt on it. I want nice, shiny, tinned surfaces to accept the wire for its new permanent collection connection and this is a bit hard to do with the camera where i have it sorry about that all right so now let's see do i have enough slack to do what i want to do 
just barely so let me make sure any excess solder is off of this old wire so it's just tinned I bring it where my pliers go into the lug and then get, give it a mechanical crimp as much as the old wire will allow. Don't want it to break. Sometimes I have a little extra slat and I can expose some fresh wire and get a slightly better crimp, but that's good. So now I will solder that if I can find where my solder went. Ah. Hit it for myself on the other side of the chassis. And again, the wire's already tinned and the lug's already tinned. Have that little bit of crimp there. So the solder is not being used as glue. And I want to reinforce that mechanical crimp by putting a little backwards pressure on it while the solder is warm. Now I'm going to use this connection here on the old courtesy outlet to take the new neutral slash primary junction. So I'll get some of that old solder out. And there's nothing wrong with old solder, but when you heat things up repeatedly, the flux dissipates and the solder can be really grainy. And so it's always nice to have fresh and I also want to get a lot of that solder out so that I can have an open space for the two wires to go into and know that they have a little bit of a crimp before the solder is float. Here's some blasphemy for you. I'm going to cut this excess, leaving myself a little bit of slack. So I think about that much slack. And even that little snippet will get returned with them because collectors be crazy people. I mean, I have the right diameter selected. I don't want to cut the inter internal wire. Just want to cut the, the jacket. There we go. That cloth insulation can be a little extra rugged sometimes. And because I know what's going to happen when this wire comes in, it's best for me to have both of them approach from the bottom. So I'm going to give this a little bit of a U-shape. And I want to tin the very end of this so they don't fray when I bend them. Otherwise, the wire strands can separate. This is a very good quality wire that they used, and the, the individual strands are pre-tinned. But this way, if the ends are all crimped together, I know that they won't fray apart and separate when I do this bend right here. And again, this is much easier to do if the camera is not right where I would normally be putting my head. I'm very nearsighted. All right, so I've got this nice crimp, and I'm going to give it just the barest flow of solder right now. So it's going to want to stay there, but I do not want it flowing into that receptacle hole yet because I want to have space to put the neutral wire of the new power cable later. Snip the excess. And then just kind of neaten this up. All right, so we have 
the neutral prepared for the new wire. We have the polarity switch disconnected. The new hot is going to snake back through here and come to this point of the fuse. And then from the fuse, it will go to the power switch. And in a less clean app, I might reuse the same wire here. But let's see, do we have one which is already shorter from the factory so I don't have to cut anything? No, no. So they're all about the same. So I will uh, connect this. I'm not going to cut it shorter though, which would, if this were a new build, I would have a shorter wire. With this, I'll just tuck the excess into the chassis. And again, the old solder sometimes needs a little bit of help. In this case, I'm not going to remove the old solder. I'm just going to add a little bit of fresh. Let's see if I can do this without hitting the camera. And I have enough excess length on that wire. Actually, I'm going to remove some of that solder. It's just quite a bit pooling up there. I don't want that. And I'll show you why. Huh. This solder sucker is beginning to suck, by which you mean that it's not. I've got a better one. Hopefully it'll be here tomorrow. Okay, now that's that. Oh, sorry about that. Now that that hole is exposed, I can put this wire through here. give it a crimp because I never want this wire to come loose unless I or another future tech deliberately make it come loose. All right, that's nice and solid. Let me tilt the camera up a little bit. So we've got this nice loop, and as in so many fenders, I'll just tuck this here into the chassis. So not a lot of excess. There's no strain on the connections. This one is still the factory joint from 1968. It's still fine. This one's a fresh joint. That's great. So I am ready for the new power cable. So the neutral will go to here. The hot will go to the inside connection of the fuse and the ground will go directly to chassis later so on to the next bits i have to move the camera to show the next things we're going to do actually be before we move to the next bit i made a minor almost theoretical mistake i had the neutral junction prepped to go here because on most 60s outlets there's no differentiation in the uh, plug size between hot and neutral but then I noticed that this one did have a larger plug hole for the neutral so I've moved it over here it, there's still no hot on the other side so it's purely theoretical but just in case someone were to plug something which had power into this I didn't want to have uh, anything coming in on the hot side to the power transformer in addition to what's coming from the wall on purpose so it's kind of a theoretical goof, but one which I have corrected and is not a goof now. All right. These one watt comp carbon composite screen grid resistors get absolutely roasted in a fender because they're mounted right over the 6L6s or 6V6s, depending on the amp. And all that heat just rises and bakes them. The 1.5Ks can often uh, be drifted as well. And I'll measure these. Sometimes they're okay, but these screen grids rarely are. Uh, they often just fall apart during this removal process because they're, they're, they're just so abused. I'm going to replace these 1 watts with some 3 watt um, wire wounds mounted just to the side of the tube socket away from that heat. So this problem will never exhibit itself again. So let's see if I can do this and have it be visible on camera. There's not a lot of 
slack there because this resistor is actually installed at the fender factory before the socket's put in place. So um, it's a little bit tricky to get out without it breaking. Let's see if I can do it. And sometimes you'll see all kinds of stuff just bubble up from the resistor itself. Um, pliers, pliers, pliers. Pliers are good things. Move the screen wire. See if I can get this to come out. This is one of the issues where the collectors can make things difficult because the way this, wire, this uh, resistor has been crimped and bent from the factory makes it not want to come out easily. And I do not want to damage the tube socket at all. So I'm just trying to straighten that out a little bit. See if I can get this to come out. At least move back and then work at it from the other side. Just get myself a little bit of slack. You see all that gunk oozing out of the resistor. That's something which happens a lot with old carbon composites and fenders. So I'm not using much force on any of this. It may look it in the video, but I'm really being gentle and going kind of slow. It's almost out. Let's see if I get a bit of that solder out of the way. Maybe it'll help. I know this is really exciting stuff to watch, but if you really are interested in the stuff I do or stuff Amptex do to get things right, this is what it takes. And when I'm not uh, doing this while recording it, I'll have a movie playing or a podcast or what, a history or nature documentary to occupy parts of my brain that are not Martha Stewart. Boy, this is exciting. Just got to get this bent just a little bit more, or straightened out just a little bit more. Once one side is free, the other one comes out very easily. Almost there, almost there. If this resistor was damaged, I would just cut the lead. And I'm tempted to do it anyway because this is such a pain in the butt. But collectors want original parts included with amps. So this amp is ever sold on the vintage market and given how the clean 68s are going up in value. It's a little bit extra time justifies itself for the owner because it can be the difference in the selling price. There we go. That's going in the stash of stuff to be returned. So some collector can look at it and do whatever collector winkery they do. I'm gonna get the solder out of this lower connection on the screen pen. Not, it's actually not the screen pin, it's pin 6, which is where the screen grid resistor connects. Pin 4 is the actual screen pin, but you'll see why I'm doing this in a moment. All right, I'm going to do the other one, which should be the same process. And unless something goes wrong, I'll speed this up and show you the ta-da afterwards. Should be exactly the same. Okay, not only was there no issue with that, it was actually much easier. And I kind of wish that I had said 
if I had started with this one and said, all right, see how easy that was? I'll do the same thing on the other one. Anyway. Get some excess old solder out. But especially on pin four, I want it to be tinned and clean. All right, so we've got the old screen wire from the factory. It and the connection to the other one and the resistor were all in this top hole. I like to mount them in the bottom hole when I rebuild them. But that way I don't have as many leads in the same uh, eyelet. Some of that excess off there. This wire is just immaculate. It's like it's brand new. It's older than I am and it's like it's brand new. Wish I had it secret. Probably doesn't drink coffee though, so that sounds boring. All right. In the factory, they just had them poke through the holes. And that lasted, obviously. But uh, if an app fails with a factory solder joint, that's on some nameless person at Fender back in 1968. If it fails after I do the work, that's on me. So I'm giving these screen connections a crimp. I'll solder that bottom hole connection first. Make sure they're really soldered to the pin, not just to each other. And there's a little bit of excess there I'm going to snip off. Excess wasn't an issue in the original, but because um, I crimped it, that excess went to the side. I'll do the same thing on this side. I'm going to crimp it the other way. It's not a full wrap, because that just makes the some tech in the future cuss me. And I don't want to piss her off. But it's enough of a wrap that there's a good mechanical connection, and the solder just reinforces that. All right, I'm gonna measure these 1.5K grid stoppers from pin one to pin five on each outlet, each socket rather, to make sure that they're good. Because that is crucial. If one of those fails, the tube will have no bias. 1.8K. one point eight six K so both of them have drifted up from one point five but uh, both of them have drifted up about the same and they were uh, ten percent tolerance resistor to begin with so I'm not too concerned about that I'm examining the solder joints they look good uh, unless there's a noise when the app is otherwise done which I attribute to those grid stoppers those originals are going to stay However, instead of these one watt carbon composite resistors that absorb all kinds of yuck from the environment and do not like heat, this app is getting these very nice low mass Vichy three watt resistors, which uh, will be mounted to the side away from the direct heat. They weigh very little. There's no stress on those connections and a three watt won't get as hot uh, in of itself as a one watt and it's a much higher quality resistor for this purpose. Now there is some debate among techs as to whether a screen grid resistor connection should be crimped so that it cannot come loose or whether especially with a higher wattage resistor like this it should be uh, not crimped so that if this if there is a lot of heat the solder there uh, would at one of the pins would uh, heat up and the resistor would just drop out. So if you have an issue with the tube, one of the solder joints gets hot, the resistor falls away, the connection's broken. In this case, with no screen uh, connection, there'd be no outputs and no damage can occur. And I've thought long and hard about that. I can see the pro pros and cons of each approach. And I find that with these three watt low masses, 
I can do the no crimp approach like so. So the, in the unlikely event that there's an issue with one of these resistors or the screen supply in general, that, and a solder, if the solder joint would get too hot before the, you know, and the resistor fell out, that's fine. But in the meantime, these things have such little mass that there is no strain on this solder joint, which is only held in place by solder. This is one of the only places in any app where I will do this, where I have the solder essentially being glue, glue though there is a little bit of mechanical force at play holding them there. Uh, anyway, this resistor is equidistant on each side. Um, it's away from the direct heat. It's not interfering with pin five. If uh, something were to go wrong, this won't fail prematurely with three watt, uh, but neither but is it straining that uh, joint which has otherwise no mechanical support. And uh, down the road, if I come to disagree with myself as to whether these should be crimped, I'll live with that. I've not had any failures with this. I think it's because they're so low mass. Um, if someone is using the larger white uh, Adobe, you know, white brick style cement resistors, they have a lot more mass. There's more weight. They have very thin leads. There can be a lot of vibration. If I have to use one of those in an amp, I do a little J-hook uh, for mechanical support. And you're kind of just saying, well, that screen connection will never, ever come undone until someone deliberately does it. We'll just have to trust the fuses. This uh, deliberately unwrapped solder joint connection is kind of putting in an additional f fuse point or where the amp can just stop working with no damage. I know this is really exciting stuff, but I know that these will not fail unless there's a catastrophic error in this app. If there's a catastrophic error in this app, hopefully the fuse will step in and keep anything bad from happening.